What is going on guys, Gaston Ray here, and in this video we're going to talk about some of the issues that people have been reporting about the R5 and R6, but hold on, don't close the video because we're not going to be trashing Canon. As a matter of fact, I want to put into perspective what you're really getting for $3,900 and $2,500. All that information coming right up. And welcome back to the channel guys. My name is Gaston. I'm a photographer from Miami, Florida. I do your reviews, tutorials and behind the scenes. So if you like the content that you see around here in the channel, consider subscribing and hitting the notification button for more videos like this one. Now, a lot of people have been talking about the Canon R5 having terrible heating issues. And this actually happened after Peter McKinnon, a few minutes after the uh, Canon announcement, posted a video about the Canon R5 and talking about his experience with the camera, particularly on AK video mode and also when using the R6 and some of the 4K video mode. So he was claiming that the camera was actually heating up and he was a little bit frustrated having to wait for the camera to cool off. Now, if you remember a few months back, we actually talked about this issue that it was going to be a potential concern about the R5, especially because the camera does not have a fan. Now, if you actually take a look at uh, a cinema camera that actually can do AK video recording at full frame, for example, the Red Monstro, that camera is a beast, but also it has a price that is also a beast, $79,000, 500. Now, if you take a look at most cinema cameras, they're gonna have a bulky, squarey body. And one of the reasons is because these cameras have proper cooling system designed to keep the sensor cool and keep you going without interruptions. $3,900 versus $79,000 500 is a pretty large difference. And I think this is where people are getting the Canon R5 and the R6 a little bit confused because first of all, these two cameras are photography camera first. Now, if you take a look at the very first DSLRs and the R5, we're pretty much having the same exact body. And without even going this close, go back all the way to the film days and you're gonna realize that not a lot has changed actually when it comes to the shape form factor of photo cameras. Now, with the advancement of technology, photo cameras are more capable these days of giving us some of the uh, uh, video features that a lot of us want. But I think a lot of people are being a little bit unfair by considering the R5 completely garbage. I've seen a lot of videos on the internet, people saying, do not do buy not the Canon R5 before, before you watch this watch video. Do not do buy the Canon R6, R5, R5, a complete R5. failure. So I think that this is a little bit much more of an extreme because these two cameras are incredible. Now, let's talk about some of the features of both cameras to understand what we're getting for our money. So the R5, as you know, has a 45 megapixel sensor and the camera is going to be capable of AK video recording internal 12 bit RAW. Yes, that's a heck of a, a lot of information that the camera is going to be recording internally. But of course, you're going to have limitation because the body of the camera is not designed to process as much information uh, for a long period of time. I think that the line is actually drawn these days about 4K 30, 4K 60 pushing it because more than that, it is going to require, at least with the current technology for processors and sensors, uh, for the camera to have some sort of cooling system. So, um, you know, these two cameras are great. You know, remember the Canon R5 and R6, basically that's the main difference, the sensor and the uh, output video, because other than that, you got pretty much a similar camera. You're gonna have a version two of dual pixel autofocus. You're gonna have for the first time on both cameras, IBIS. And yes, I know a lot of camera companies already have IBIS, but Canon is going to allow you to pair the image stabilization of the body, the sensor, which is actually 5.5 stops, with the image stabilization of some of the lenses, giving you up to a stop of image stabilization. Guys, for $2,500 and $3,900, you're gonna be able to shoot 4K video handheld or 8K video handheld. So because of this reason, I don't consider fair trashing a photo camera for not being great at certain things when it comes to video. It's kind of like I saying, you know, this bicycle, this $500 bicycle is not great as the Tour of France as opposed to a bicycle that costs maybe thousands and thousands of dollars. We're talking about two different monsters, you know. You have in one end the cinema cameras, which cost an arm and a leg, and they are specifically designed for cinematography. And then you have photo cameras that, by the way, they can also do some pretty good specs when it comes to video recording. So 
Now, the other funny part is that Canon themselves, they don't even have an 8K video camera full frame in their cinema camera. There is an upcoming camera that actually is going to have 8K capabilities, but it's gonna have a super 35 millimeter sensor, which is actually an APS-C sensor uh, when shooting with a 16 to nine aspect ratio. Now, Canon themselves don't have in their cinema cameras and we're punishing Canon because they didn't give us pretty long uh, recording time when it comes to the R5. The other thing is that, remember, the R5 is only going to have two car slots and one of them is an SD card and the other one is a CF Express card. So if you were thinking that you were going to rely on this camera and save yourself, you know, thousands of dollars on a proper cinema camera, I think you're going to be completely uh, disappointed because the R5 is going to have only one card that you're going to be able to record AK video onto. And also a lot of the 4K modes only are going to be available when recording with a CF Express card. So chances are that if you're going to be going to an AK shoot, you know, you're not going to have backup of your recording. There's not going to be redundancy recording. Whereas with the R6, you're going to be able to do simultaneous backups of your videos and your photo onto the second SD card UHS-2. So in my opinion, the R6 is a much more realistic video camera for most video needs out there. You know, I don't know a lot of people that actually need 8K video recording for an extensive amount of time, let alone just people that need 8K video recording. The other thing is that you are gonna have to buy a lot of media, CF Express Media, if you're planning to shoot with this camera a lot in 8K. You know, one terabyte is going to run you out of run $1,000, $900, something like that. And it's gonna give you only 51 minutes of video recording in 8K. Now, I am personally very thankful that Canon had advanced this technology that right now, a lot of this, I don't even have it with my Sony cameras and the much more expensive Sony cameras. So for $3,900, you get a heck of a photography camera with a heck of amount of uh, video features and same for the R6. So, now, so what do you think guys? Should we be mad at Canon? Drop your comments down below and let me know what's your outlook. Love to hear it as always guys. Make sure to drop any comments that you may have any questions. Subscribe to the channel for more content like this one. And until then, guys, see you on the next video. Take care.